Ladies and gentlemen, it's real late. Hot 97. Remember this joint right here? Hold on, hold on. Remember this? Remember this? Hold on, hold on. Remember this? Are we taking them back? Oh, of course we are. We got to take them back. Holy moly. Remember this when I first started real late? This is when you first came to town and you were like, answer my calls as soon as I call. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, Torre. <laughs> I've always stayed pretty decent about your calls. No, no, we good. You're high good. on my list. We good. I'm like in the top 100. <laughs> you know, 100%. <laughs> Not top 8, but top like 80. Nah, definitely top 80. <laughs> Yo, top <laughs> 80, dead or alive. Yo, t- <laughs> Torre is in the building, Brooklyn's own. Coney Island was popping. Coney Island's own. Also, Torre, hold on. Let me see if I have this, though. Hold on. Do I have this, though? Oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Oh, man. This was it right here. Yo, this... This might have been your illest promo, B. I, it really I'm might. I'm keeping 1,000. Yo, this really <laughs> might have been. I'm going to let this rock for a second. Hold on. I haven't heard this in a while. Yo, it's gotten so worse, too, since then. I, I know, it's gotten I know. way worse. So, um, actually, no. Do you think it has gotten worse, though? We're better than the Snap um, ringtone era. Um, it's a different I think it's a different rendition of you know it's the progressive snap ringtone era but like it's definitely better like for example like the stuff that's super popular right now um, you know like the uh, the futures and the drakes and there's a lot of stuff that's out there that even if you're sort of by nature an underground head you can appreciate right like you can like I, I as like opposed good to ring- music you know what I'm saying like it doesn't matter what Category or subcategory you want to put it in Like I think Drake got joints He can spit So we gonna take Drake even out of that conversation Cause for me Drake But, no, but he, what busy. I'm saying is But he's the pinnacle of popular Whereas he the is. pinnacle of popular in the er- that era 06 Was them franchise boys Yeah like it was rough <laughs> Like it was some rough stuff going on Whereas right now rough. We have You have Drake You have Future You have a lot of people that are pretty dope Making I like, I music think, I like a lot of the stuff that Future puts out music wise Like sonically it sounds good I don't know what he's saying no, of course A lot not. of the of times not. But that March Madden is so hard though That's what I'm saying He has March a lot Madden of joints so hard. Yo even commas was hard like, Oh commas hard. hard Hard Move that dope Hard, hard. hard. So Yeah no absolutely We're in a absolutely. better place than we were We're in a better bad place so, Yeah better <laughs> bad But what I really do think about Like if you would have said in 2006 if someone had told you, or maybe you already knew, but if someone educated you on Kendrick and people like that and J. Cole was saying, these are going to be the biggest guys, you'd go, that's an improvement. I love that. You know? I love that. I always I always commend those two guys for having the platform that they have and having the push that they have and still, you know, not swaying away from what they believe in music-wise and not compromising their sound. You know, I think that's super dope because it's so easy to just... You know, take the wrong pill and go for it. You know, but these guys stick true. They stay true to their guns. And I think that they've both been really successful, you know, just standing firm on, on their beliefs, man. So kudos to them. Now, you, you're you rapping. You have a Kickstarter campaign out right now. Yeah. To finish up your album. Let's finish this thing. So what, what's the, and I'm going to play the song, which is great. Your Thank new you. song with DJ Premier, Thank Saturday you. Night. Shout out to Prem. I mean, I would have preferred if it was called Sunday Night, but it's cool. We're going to let it rock with this Saturday This is actually night. Monday morning, though. Yeah, that's a good point. You should have <laughs> called it Monday. You should have called it Monday. really early Monday morning. <laughs> Um, so how can people contribute if they're Torre fans, Brooklyn, they want to support Brooklyn? Yes, how do they def- do this? Definitely do that. Um, I guess the easiest way is just to hit up my Twitter or Instagram at Torre. Um, the link is right there in the bio. You know what I'm saying? Click it if you want to contribute something to it. We have some really cool rewards, you know, and that's what excited me about even doing it. I was like, yeah, I don't want to ask people for money. That's weird. And it was like, no, it's a different way to interact with your audience. And, uh, you know, I'm about being progressive and trying to, you know, keep pushing the coach and pushing things forward. So, um, you know, we doing cool stuff like I'm going to come to your crib and play the album. You and the homies, we just going to vibe out. Um, there's a create your own reward thing. You know, if you want to come to the gym with me and drink green juice and, you know what I mean, take pump iron. Yeah, we can do that. Like, it's a lot of cool stuff. And, and for me, being able to get in there with the audience, the people who've been supporting me since 05, 06, is bigger than finishing the album per se. But it's a dope way just to just to connect with the fans and take it, you know, a step further than just I put out a record, you buy it, you like it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So if, they, so if right now people go follow Torre, T-O-R-A-E, on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, they can find the Kickstarter link. Yes, do it. We only have a couple days left, so let's really go out with a bang. So do I need to pause that? or No. No, it's, it's okay? It's 2015. It's cool. we, I'm like... I barely pause. It has to be such a blatant pause. Now. <laughs> like, I'm right behind you. You know what I'm saying? It has to be like, really? <laughs> you what? Like, if, exactly. Otherwise, I'm not really doing pause. Yo, great record, man. Thank you, P. I appreciate that. A really nice tune. Um, 
how to was this was this a situation where you and Preem went to the lab together? Yeah, always. And always. got and got it just he does he play you a bunch of stuff or is it this is it? He always makes it. He always makes it right there on the spot. So, you know, me and Preem, I think we on like our five, six joint at this point. Fifth, six joint. That's gotta make you feel That's a big fuck friggin' deal. That's got, yeah, it's gotta make you feel very <laughs> special, right? Absolutely. So, um, but I didn't wanna just do Give me the hardest beat ever. I go do rapidy raps because we've done that before. You know, I was like, let me do something different with, with Prem. Let's do a story joint. You know, and um, and I wanted to do something kind of comical. And when he when he did the beat, and I was, it just had that Asian feel to it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I think I know where I could take this and make it a funny story, something that we never did before, but it's still a Torre Prem joint as far as the bars and the beats. But you know, just just something that sounds a little different than what you you used to hearing from us. Um, so real quick, tell let's let's tell people what what do you have going on with the Brooklyn Nets? This is very cool. I didn't know about this till the other day. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Nets. Um, I'm actually doing. Or I actually did the um the theme song for the 2015 2016 season on uh, on the Yes Network. So that's super dope. And then I also did the voiceovers for all the commercial spots. So it's one for uh, Thaddeus Young. It's one for Brook Lopez. It's one for Joe Johnson. And then it's one just for the whole Nets team in general so like if you're watching the Yankees game on yes and you see like the Nets coming soon commercial and you hear that you're like I know that voice is that oh wait that's the boy tour so you know it's, it's super dope crazy for me though because I grew up a Knicks fan my whole life you know what I'm saying so yeah now it's interesting I, and I you was, gotta show love to the Nets because you're a Brooklyn because I'm a Brooklyn guy through. right I'm thoroughbred Brooklyn like if you cut me I bleed like Junior's Cheesecake you right know what I'm saying? which like, is I'm disgusting super, but it's super real. Brooklyn though yeah um, you know, but at the end of the day, like a Brooklyn dude, it's always go pick up the check. You know what I'm saying? You're going so to pick up the check. We're going to go pick up that check. Believe that. You know, so shout out to the Nets. And I never fronted on the Nets. You know, I was always kind of just like, I'm a Knicks fan. I've been a Knicks fan 20-something years, so I'm not a switch sider because I'm a Brooklyn dude. Like, everything about me represents Brooklyn, so it's so weird that I'm not a Nets fan, but they just got here. So, so it takes you know. time. Right, but, but I, I, listen, I, I never have, fronted on them. I have very complex feelings on what people are allowed to do with their sports fanship. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I don't, I'm very big on being utterly loyal, but I'm also big on, I do believe you can have a relationship with another team. As long as it's clear. Like, it's like the a, Ashley Madison of, exactly. of sports. It's like a side piece, but it's just that you have to be definitive. Like, no, no, right. you're this my is, side piece. Right. This is Bay. You know what I'm saying? And when she's around. Respect it's, that. It, it's quiet for you. <laughs> right. But when she's not around, like, we can hang out. Let's cook. Like, playoff time. <laughs> If my if my main piece is gone, right. yo, we gonna hang out in the playoffs. You, you yeah. looking good, baby? You looking good, yeah, right? Looking right. <laughs> she's my girl. She's hey, she's kind of struggling right now. <laughs> um, so that's very exciting. You have an out. Al- When's the album hopeful? Like, when are you hopeful to get the album out? Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm very very positive and, and sure that we'll we'll hit this Kickstarter goal, um, which ends again on Wednesday. Um, so I'm looking at a December release, which actually coincides with the release of The Breaks, which is on VH1 that I'm a part of as well. Um, it's a movie set in the early 90s. Um, Met the Man is in it. Wood Harris is in it. Mac Wiles is in it. Um, directed by Seth Mann, based on the book The Big Payback by Dan Charnas. Mm. Um, Preem did the music. So it's like super dope. I got a really small role, but... Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's going to be ill. And um, I feel like it's going to be a series, too. So, you know. Really? It should be really, really ill. You think it's going to be a series? Yeah. I, think, I do believe it's going to be a series. On VH1 or somewhere on else? On VH1. Really? On VH1. <laughs> Rosenberg's <laughs> like, let me call my agent. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm like, let me call my agent. or like, let me call another network. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have some VH1 experience. Um, okay, now, real quick. Where can people hear you every day uh, on Sirius Yes, if you uh, do have satellite radio, thank you. We appreciate you guys. Um, I'm on Sirius XM Hip Hop Nation, which is Channel 44, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. The name of the show is The Tour Guide. And, uh, you know, we just up there playing music and having fun. I've been doing it. Um, my own show for about a year and a half now. and How do you like it? How do you enjoy doing the radio side of things? I enjoy it, man. It's like it's like making a song that doesn't have to be three minutes and 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just talk my stuff over the beat. I get a chance to interact with people. Um, I had some great interviews. I had Game on last week. You know, I get a chance to um, sit with a lot of people that I might not have been able to cross paths with otherwise. So, it's dope, man. It's, it's a very ill um, It's a very Ill thing. You know, though, P. I do know that part well. But I do think it's... I do think you're... Um, Honestly, I think you're, uh, dare I say, inspirational. Oh, wow. For other artists. For, you know, listen, you chose to be the kind of artist you were from very early on, which is a boom bap, true hardcore Brooklyn rapper and uncompromising. You weren't trying to be a mainstream rapper. You, oh, you just love music. You're right. going to always make music. And then within that, um, you've found other ways 
to between music mm-hmm. have a life, a great life in music. That's not working some job. You know what I'm saying? That's the most important thing, man. Be able to do it and do it on your own terms and not compromising. You know, I'm like, when I got here, I was like, yo, I'm going to be a big time rapper and it's going to be X, Y, Z. And then I peeked behind the curtain. I saw the Wizard of Oz and I was like, oh, this is different than what I thought. Yeah, I don't know if this is like. So, but, but it's, you know, you got to find your path. You know what I'm saying? Because I see a lot of guys, this is no disrespect, but guys who came before me and were big and they, they wash now and I was like I'm not gonna do that I got a wife I got two kids well that's the thing you have to there are a few decisions you have to make mm-hmm. and it's like I'm either going to sell out which by the way may not work right so cause that's the first thing and then you can't go back home after that no you can't once you curse your moms out and move out the crib you can't go no, back no you can't go back not and, and, and further and also people don't give enough credit to sell outs right because they just assume cause, cause it's a very good excuse to be like well I could have sold out but mm-hmm. I didn't eh you maybe know you could have yeah, sold you out don't know if it was gonna work. you don't know if it was gonna work and if you sold out you might have just been a sellout who di- it didn't work out That's for, it. and, and then, I won't and name names, really, but really it's happened. Over. It's we've seen it happen with some guys we liked, Absolutely. and they stepped out like I'm gonna just give it a shot, and it didn't work. Pants so, got real tight, it got real left, and it's still and still no one listened. Nothing. So let's not even write off all the sellouts. I give some credit to people who sell out correctly and make it work. If for you them. can make it work for you, kudos to you. Then, God bless your life. Then there you go, and we all understand. Like, oh, we know what you were really about, and then you gave up and you went and got a check. It's the same. Sometimes selling out is the same as giving up. And going and getting a day job. Right. It's both selling out to what the original plan was. Listen, man, the biggest sellout, and, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but y'all remember when Pitbull used to spit. Y'all remember TVT Pitbull. I'm not talking about Mr. Worldwide with the suits and the, all the millions of records. So I'm talking about when he was gritty MC. You know what I'm saying? So people might say he sold out. But if that's what the sellout is and it works for you, do that. Yeah, yeah, like every as, time. Otherwise, what? If, ten times out of ten times, you, you do, do that. that. You go be put Pitbull. Of course, like Pitbull. Otherwise, because when he tried doing that, he was the whole that whole TVT ride. If that didn't work, and he just like, eh. If 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 he had just gotten a job at a bank and was like, yo, I used to be a rapper, that would have been tight. He's right. a freaking multi-millionaire. Right. He's, He's killing it. It's ex- absolutely worked out well. So like, I just think what you did though is you saw you're like, well, the kind of music I'm into is it's hard for it to be incredibly lucrative. Right. So, but I'm I'm talented. I'm a good talker. I can host stages. I can host shows. And you've put together this nice thing for yourself, which isn't common. It came from a conversation I had with a good friend. Um, It was when my my son was about to be born, and I was just, like, in a a position where I was like, yo, I'm doing music. You know, it's not like the the, the, the industry is changing, the sound is changing, what's popular is changing. I don't know if I can do that. What do I do now? Do I just go back and get a job? And it was like, well, yeah, you got to figure out how to make money. But when you say a job, don't think of it as, yo, go somewhere you hate, put on a suit, you know what I'm saying, like some miserable existence. Figure out what you're good at, figure out what else you love, and then figure out how to monetize it. And that's when, you know, I started A&R for Soul Spasm. I started doing red carpets. I started doing radio. Um, and I turned it into a career, man. And I'm, I'm super blessed. I'm happy, you know. A lot of guys will tell you what they're doing. I'll just show you the work. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, another one last important question is, I'm curious. I've never asked you this off the air. How many times <clears throat> in life have you... How many times I got to... Okay. How many times in life have you either um, had to defend me in a conversation <laughs> oh, or, or you didn't defend me, but you wanted to and just like, eh, I'm not going to bother? You know what, Pete? Um, I would say early on when you first got here, there was a lot of defending because people were like, well, how he get this position in the spot? And then... Well, but back then you were forced to because right, I was but, playing your records. <laughs> but then after you... Because you popped, you know, you're, you're definitely an inspiration as well. After you popped, people said that you got different. You got funny style. I said, so there was a second layer of... Yeah, yeah there was a the second, second the second layer of defense. <laughs> it was like we used to wear two condoms back in the day. It was the second layer of defense. Um, you know, and I was like, nah, yo. I was like, listen... He is different. He's busy. He got a lot more things going on. But I think under all that, he's still the same good dude. Um, I might have to text him twice to get the reply. But What's so bad about twi- texting twice? Nothing. I always text people twice. Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing at all, And that's Peter, it? Hold on. There wasn't, a, th- there, wasn't a, Rosenberg. there wasn't a third layer? It was only two layers. No. I think, I think people who know you and respect you and have a relationship and rapport with you from the jump, still have that same. Yeah, I think for the thing. most part that's yeah, true. Yeah, for the most part, I think new guy. You know, because every day somebody's coming up to you with they hand out, with they tape out, with they MP3 ready to send, and I understand how overwhelming that can be. Like, yo, fam, chill. Well, the hard part is, is that I'm also, and anyone who's friends with me knows this. Like, 
I've got my own ego and my own dreams to come. So it's like, my man, I really want to make it happen for you, but there's only one person I definitely want to make it happen for more. This guy. And that's me. Right here. So it's a, tough, it's a tough balance. But I just figured, I know that you are one of the people who I connected with who, even when I'd done things that I'm sure had repelled other people, you and I had always had a close enough rapport. I'm like, well, he knows we, what I'm about. Yeah, we spoke. We spoke about, I, I don't want to bring up and rehash old things, but we spoke about some of the decisions and I gave you my opinion on them. You know, like, yo, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we all do things. We all make choices. Um, some some, is, some choices are public. Right. You're, you're in, that's exactly where I was going. You're in the public eye, so everything is going to be scrutinized. You know what I'm saying? And, and people are always going to have something to say. Good, bad, or indifferent. Well, I thank you for the times that you defended me, Always. and for the times you didn't defend me. But Don't you thought, make me but you thought in your head, you were like, and you were like, I would like to defend them <laughs> right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, yo, I'm not going to. I'll make it easy for you now. I mean, I might have some sports conversations with you, like, yo, Rose. Yo, congratulations wilding. too, man. Thank you, thank See you, you thank out you. here, ESPN. Yeah, e I'm, ESPN. I'm, Ooh, I just made that up right ooh, now. Right on the spin side. No, and your I, wife I, is doing great things. Yeah, we're doing our. It's, it's the same thing as you, though. It's just figuring out the, the different things you're able to do to make this thing work because we can't all be Pitbull. And that's what we learned today. <laughs> Yo, Torre, go to his Kickstarter, support him. Album coming soon. We'll have you back when the album comes out. My brother, thank you so much. All right, Torre, Brooklyn, we out. Real late. <laughs>